All right, we're back with another episode. This is a special episode. I got one of my longtime, first-time friends on, and today we're going to get to the sponsors first. www.johnbartoloshow.com. Go check out all the sponsors on there. Uh, all those guys support the show. Go check them out. I want to give a, a special thanks to uh, Innovative Carts. I want to give a special thanks to them. And, of course, I want to thank uh, Inforce, Kenzie's Optics, and Gallo Tech and Rhino Metals. Go check those guys out. The links will be down below. And remember to leave reviews. I'm terrible at asking for reviews, so I want to ask all you guys, if you're listening to this episode, please leave a review. Uh, one of my, dare I say it, older friends in the business of fitness, bodybuilding, motivation. He shoots guns. He enjoys self-defense. He loves all that stuff. I can't wait to get into it with this guy and chop it up. We got the owner of Axe and Sledge, the owner of the HWMF podcast. Seth, what's going on? How you doing, John? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Listen, you're a guy I admire so much for the hard work that you put in, your competitiveness, what you've done by saying, you know what, I'm going to go out, do my own thing, and just get out there and do it. And you did it in the midst of all kinds of professional, personal life chaos going on. And, (laughs) bro, listen, you got my respect. And I rarely start a show with that type of introduction on that level. And I've always looked at you from afar and said, this guy just does it, puts his head down and just does it. And I have to ask, the last couple of years have been a wild journey for you. I've seen it play out. What was it like? Take me through it, starting the brand. Let's start with Axe and Sledge. Take me through it. And, and what was it like to get to this point where you are right now? And it's got to feel good. <laughs> yes, it does. It, it's... Uh... You know, like you said, I'd probably say that my journey across uh, competitive bodybuilding, being sponsored by a number of different companies, owning my own, own owning my own company, my own supplement company, uh, having uh, a successful podcast, bro, it is a wild journey. And i probably say that, uh, like you said, just keeping my head down and busting my ass has been the number one, it's been the number one tool that I've needed to use this entire time. But. Uh, we'll get into it. Like you said, uh, I'd probably say, I don't even know where to start. It's been crazy. It has been a wild roller coaster ride. Axe and Sledge, uh, we started this company in 2018. Uh, that was the, uh, I was sponsored by a number of different companies over the years. I turned pro in bodybuilding in 2009. Uh, I had this crazy dream of being, you know, this crazy great competitive bodybuilder, being on stage, Mr. Olympia, all these things. And uh, it didn't really work out that way. My home life took a hit. I, I, I started losing bodybuilding shows, and I got discouraged. I started acting irrationally like a young, dumb kid and not keeping my head on straight. I stepped away from bodybuilding, missed it, came back. But whenever I came back uh, to, the, to the bodybuilding industry, I said I had to own my own company. I wanted to run. I wanted to have complete control of my life. Because if there's one thing I learned of all the ups and downs of my life, if you don't have complete control of it, uh, you won't really, you won't become who you want to become. So you need to make sure that you have control of it. So uh, I started an apparel brand in 2016 called All American Roughneck. And the apparel brand was, uh, it was the, it was the brand for the hardworking motherfuckers of the world, for the All American Roughnecks, all the blue collar, hardworking men and women of America that are proud to be where they're from. Right. And uh, so uh, over over a couple years of running that company, I, uh, I worked for a couple other supplement companies, and then I said that I think it's time for me to invest all of the money that I've made into a supplement company that I believe in, and it's going to be my own. I'm going to own it. I'm going to run it. Uh, it's going to be my formulas. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to do any of the dumb shit that I've done as a young kid or anything that I see other people do that I disagree with. I have to keep to my word. And, and one of these things, like, I looked at it and I said, I said, I'm going to be the motherfucker that I dreamt of being when I was 16 years old. When I was 16 years old, thinking of all these cool ideas and these fun different things to do and, and not being a bag of shit like you see some people do or screw people over. And, I mean, I've done all those things. 
Like I said, I've lied, I've cheated, I've stole, I've done a ton of dumb shit. But I said, from a business perspective, from a company's perspective, I'm going to do everything that I said I'd do when I was that young kid. And uh, I met great business partners who we had great conversations with. Uh, uh, their name, Mike, uh, Mike Roten, Patrick Williams, and Bob Daltrick. Uh, those are my three business partners in everything I do. And we got together and I said, this is how we're going to run shit. Mm. And they said, and they were like, absolutely. They were like, we're on board, dude. You're, you lead the fucking way and we will be right behind you. So we, uh, we all took on our own roles from all the company perspectives. I'm the tip of the spear and uh, they're, I say I'm the tip of the spear and they're the chef. Like they throw me and I fucking spearhead it. Mm-hmm. So Axe and Sledge in 2018, we started the company. We had high quality supplements high quality ingredients, but we had to have a little bit of fuckery. We had to have fun with it. We had to make sure that people, uh, that people felt comfortable with taking it and that people have fun when they pulled out of their gym bag. Because in my opinion, my whole thing was, in my opinion, life is tough enough some days. You already have a hard time. You, you know, people have to, you have to wake up, you have to go through the monotony of the day. And whenever you get to the gym, you get to have this, crazy energetic feeling of fucking shit up. You get to go nuts. You get to let loose. And I want my brand to be a part of people's day where they feel empowered to fuck shit up, where they just feel like they just feel incredible. So that's how we built the brand. We wanted to build the brand so that whenever people pull it out of their gym bag, it puts a smile on their face and their, and the, the, the quality of the products are effective to be good for you to fuck shit up. So, uh, fortunately, long story short with that, from 2018 to 2022 date, we have grown astronomically. We have been incredibly successful at accomplishing that goal through all of our social media platforms, through Instagram, through Facebook, through YouTube, um, through the podcast. We wanted to reach regular people, regular people to be, to become empowered, to become better, better versions of themselves. So if you're in the bodybuilding industry, fuck yeah, these quality these products are top notch. If you're a main, if you're a regular dude just going to work every day that wants to look a little better naked, that wants to wake up and go do his cardio, that wants to take a quality protein, that wants to get back into the gym three four days a week so he looks better and feels better, this is the shit for you. My page, my supplement company, my apparel business, my YouTube channel is for you, and that's that's what we have. That's what we built this upon. And fortunately, uh, it has grown astronomically. And I couldn't, be, I couldn't be happier because all I do every day is I just be myself and I be the best motherfucker I can be. You know, and no matter what happens. It takes, a lot it. Of, it takes a lot of courage, Seth, to find your place, right? And to acknowledge your, your place. And I have to say, I always admire guys that take a look at the landscape and they say, you know what, the stage may be, I don't want to do that, and my passion isn't there, but I love the business and I want to stay in the business. I have the most respect for guys, because there's nothing better than finding your place. And I think a lot of guys are afraid to do that. And I think you're a very forward thinker because I think the stage shows and that stuff, I think it's, it's dying. You know, I think I, that's my personal belief. It's not Seth's to everyone. Listen, I think the stage shows are dying and I think that shows in general are dying. And I know people in bodybuilding that won't say that. Okay. Yeah. Now, are there a lot of competitors at them? Yes. But a lot of the boots, people selling t-shirts, things like that. It's, it's a tough, a tough thing. And it, they're in a lot of trouble, especially this year. Yeah. Now, with that being said, it's finding new ways to make it work, whether it's through streaming and other avenues. But you look at other brands out there like First Form that don't even do shows and you look at other brands like On It. You don't need to do that stuff to be successful. Now, you found your place and that's not easy to do. It takes a lot of looking in the mirror. And I talk a lot on this show about transitions and the aha moment right? When did you have that aha moment that you knew you had something in the new brand and you knew you were on the right path? Was it at the genesis of it when you said, I got to be my own boss, fuck working for people? Or was it, you know, when you came out with a product and you saw the returns 
you know, one, you know, month in, two months in, six months in? So I, with All American Roughneck, that was it. Like uh, in 2016, I was working as a safety consultant. Uh, I was traveling all over the place. You're doing well, too. Oh, yeah, I was doing really well. Yeah, I was, uh, bro, anything, anything. I. I, (laughs) You didn't step away from a job working at a gas station. Let's be real. No, no, I was making, I was making very good money. I was making six figures. And uh, I was doing very well. I was treated very well by the by the company I was working for. Uh, but I was traveling all over. I was doing oil and gas work, manufacturing, construction, production work. I was teaching classes on OSHA, EPA, you name it. I was doing it as a safety consultant. And uh, but I just missed bodybuilding. And and I was missing that part where, bro, I just like being my own boss. I have a problem with authority. And like you said, I know my fucking role in life. I know my role in my company. Like I, we all have a specific at my businesses. We have a specific role. Everybody stays in their lane. We question each other, but we don't ever, we don't ever overstep our boundaries where we think we're better than one other piece of this company because our companies are what they are because of where we are placed. And, uh, so when in 2016, I was like, man, it was 15. I was like, I miss bodybuilding. And I, and I think I, I think I can do something bigger than what I'm doing now. And uh, I was working for all these different, uh, working in all these different industries. And I said, man, I'm working with some of the greatest people in America. Like these blue collar motherfuckers that are just rough, rowdy dudes. Like, I mean, you walk onto a construction site with a group of 80 guys and they all have different trade skills. So they're going to bust your ball. Like I was a safety guy. They called me easy money. And I'm like, mm. that's right. I'm easy money. But when shit happens, you fucking call me. And they're like, yeah, you're right, you know? And uh, we had this bond, and I'm like, all these guys are rough on the outside. But whenever it boils down to it, you have guys that are working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, and they're all working for their family. They're all working for their daughters to go to college, for their families of five, six people to go on a nice vacation. They're eating shit in the sun, working their balls off, all for the better of their family. And I said, why is nobody making these people cool? Why is nobody making this rough, covered in dirt, covered in shit, covered in mud guy cool? Why is he not cool? Why is the, like, I like cool shit on Instagram too. You know, I like, I like high end cars and I like all this, but why is not the, the all American working family man? Why is he not cool? Mm. Because that guy is cool. Cause he's making really good money, but he's not spending it in the way these Instagram people are spending it. I say Instagram people very, very frugally. Like, I don't mean all of them. Um, But I was like, why is that guy not cool? I said, that guy needs to be cool because that guy is so important for young people. It's important for people that may never achieve this uber successful multimillionaire status. There's nothing wrong with the guy working his ass off, using his two hands, making 100 grand a year, driving a nice truck, going on a great family vacation. That motherfucker needs to be cool. So I said, that's going to be my goal. You know, and there's a lot of reasons for it, Seth. And I've been involved in marketing and marketing products that are hard to market for a long time. And I think a lot of it has to do with just the change in the times and the way media is accessible now and the way people consume media. Uh, I mean, we're going to live in an era, you and I, where there's going to be people there now, but don't have cable TV. We've seen magazines die. So the way people consume media, it's all going to end with a search bar, right? And it's going to be who controls that search bar. And people are going to say, you know, I want to see everything. Hey, hey, Alexa or Google, whatever dot. uh, I want to see what Seth's doing today. And you're going to be able to pull that up. And I think guys like you, guys like Jay, you're ahead of the curve because what you're trying to do is get your tentacles into everything. And making the working class cool or making the working class get the air cover that they deserve is something that's coming fast and furious because there's more of them. So oh, absolutely. it's, I, I look at it like Braveheart. It's like uniting the clans, right? <laughs> like you have to get everybody on the same page and get a movement started. And, you know, you take a piece and next company takes a piece and the next company takes a piece. Now, you know, for me in the firearms industry, it's always harder because everything's stacked against you. 
you can't have you can't do anything with a gun without somebody having something to say and it's a very tough industry to market but i think it's a failure on the industry's part and i've been critical of it on this show in the boardrooms in the meetings because we make it too much about the gun and the failure of of our industry is that inability to adapt to people wanting to know the story and i look at i compare all marketing to wrestling okay wwe does an amazing job marketing why because everybody knows it's fake and scripted yet they still tune in now tell me i'm lying seth tell me i'm lying they still tune in they know it's fake they know it's scripted but it's a soap opera and people tune in for the soap opera. At the end of the day, people want to see what's real, what's raw, and what's what's actual. They don't want to see something scripted. Like, I joke all the time, and I've said it on this show, so I'm not talking out of, out of school. I was talking about it with Jay the other day. That fucking guy has a million people that watch him make eggs in the morning on JTV. <laughs> yep. Because that's what people want to see. And I've said this to friends. Now, you figured out the formula. Now, the problem I have in my industry is it's an industry run by the manufacturers. And the manufacturers, they and you know this, Seth, you've been to the show. They want to be like, uh, we designed a new AR-15 rail, and this rail is going to change the cosmos. And you just want to be like, motherfucker, it's a rail. It ain't, you know what I mean? It looks cool. Okay. Uh, does yeah. it go bang? Uh, you know what I mean? So... And I think that's some of the, now the bodybuilding industry has figured it out faster. Like you explain your product, but at the end of the day, you're not sitting there like we put 47 grams of caffeine in this <laughs> and we ch- you, yeah, tell me I'm lying, Seth. No, you're not lying. It's just, you you're have to get past all that because here's what I say to people. They say, oh, well, how do you know that? I say, go watch a Nike commercial. You don't even see the fucking shoes anymore. Go, no. go watch a, a, a commercial with, with Coca-Cola. They're not saying, hey, Coca-Cola is the greatest tasting thing in the world. You know what they say? Have a Coke and a smile. It'll shut make your day up. brighter. <laughs> yeah, and shut yep. the fuck up. But you go put on um, Monster <laughs> TV or you put on Red Bull TV, you don't even see a can. No. It's some guy on Where a jet go? plane doing backflips. So it's no. what they call a debranding strategy. So... I think making the working class and making it about the people and making it about the salt of the earth people is what resonates. That's why your movement and what you're doing is so cool. You're capturing a market and a segment that hasn't always had the air cover that I feel they deserve and you feel they deserve. And I think across the board, it's like when I'm critical of certain people In the firearms business, I'm critical a lot of times of people that never walked a machine floor, never actually held a job or cashed a paycheck in uh, in in my business. Yet they ascend right to these people that be they become like pundits, and at the end of the day, they're just selling and trying to sell books and certain things. Now, you're a guy who's experienced all the different levels of bodybuilding and fitness. Came up, trained your ass off, worked hard had the working class job, you know, you did well at it. Okay. You can't fault a guy for doing well, but you know, you've done all the things and you were at the point where now it's time to put my own flag in the sand and that's hard to do. And I've done it twice in life. It's hard to do, but at the end of the day, bringing awareness to the blue collar people of this universe is a real quest. And it's something that's never going to stop. And I think you capture it well with the brand and with what you do and just your approach to all the things that you do in media. You say, hey, I'm just a dude doing dude shit and this is what I like. And you have a way about it. Yeah. And you have a way about you that's not too rough around the edges. It's, you know, you can talk, you can articulate yourself, you can have a conversation with you. You know, some guys just want to get up there and they're like, motherfucker shit, motherfucker shit, 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 shit. And you're like, okay. Can't have a conversation with this guy, but you can do all those things. And that's what makes you so great. You're like, Hey, I'm just a dude in my industry. We, we, we want to eat our own, right? Like if you're not special ninja forces, I've had this debate with people all the time. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're nothing. Yep. It's like, it's so fucked up, but it, the reality is we're not as mature as you guys. We're not on that level of maturity yet in fitness where fitness is a little more welcoming. 
And that's what's great about it is all you guys have open arms and you say, hey, you want to train? Let's train. Hey, you want to um, do a workout? Let's do a workout. You want to uh, chat? You know, I'll give you some some free education, you know. Um, so it's it's a, it's phenomenal to see. You have to, uh, I'd say, I mean, you hit, you are right. 100%, 100%. And for me, uh, with how I've done everything, like I, I, I did, I legit believe that my success is because I, I'm doing exactly what I feel I should be doing in life. Like, bro, I, nothing makes me feel better than to see somebody do better in life. Like whenever I went through all the, all the garbage with my ex-wife and my kids, um, like it was, it was a really rough time in my life. And I remember sitting, going through the shit. I remember like, you know, uh, yeah, dude, you and I, that was whenever you and I started becoming pretty close friends and I had to back away and just go do my own thing and kind of let you guys down. Because if I didn't focus on my family and my businesses, they would, they would have fell apart. Like, and it, and it still eats at me to this day about it. But, um, those, those times are why whenever I hear somebody like doing well, or they buy a new truck or they get a new house. Or, or they get the promotion at work, bro. I strive to hear those stories because because I remember going through the shit and thinking to myself, I do not want anyone to ever feel how fucking bad I feel right now. I do not mm-hmm. wish this upon my worst enemy. I was like, you could if you come to me and tell me you're going through a rough divorce with child custody, or your 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 ex is going through some some. Uh, some type of addiction problem or anything like that, or you're going through an addiction problem, bro, you are going through some shit in life that is going to fuck you up Mm -hmm. and you need to come out of it a better person. So whenever I look at anything in life, I'm like, this needs to be positive. This needs the good needs to come from this. Even if it's a bad situation, good has to come from it because if good doesn't come from it, everything else in your life will fall apart. Mm Mm-hmm. And I say at times, like, as, as individuals, we all need to be selfish. We need to be selfish in a way because if you think about it, you're the pinnacle of your own life. If you aren't doing good that day, if you're not doing good and you are the alpha of your family or the household or your job or anything you are or where you are in life, if you're that stature and you're having a bad day, that means that your kids are probably going to be like, what's wrong with that? Your significant other is going to be like, what's mm-hmm. wrong with you? Every and your employee, your business, your meeting, everything is going to take a small hit. So I say, why is why not wake up and have the day that you want to have? Wake up and have your coffee the way you want. Live your life the way you want from a positive and uh, a good standpoint. I wake up, I do my cardio, I have my coffee the way I want. I slap my woman on the ass. I let her, I might rub it on her a little bit, let her know I'm awake and alive. And you turn me on, baby, and then get ready for work. And when I go to work, I want to go with the fucking fury in the day where everybody knows I'm there and I'm there because I don't look at things, doing things half ass. I don't want to. But why is it? Seth, like I want to ask you, why is it? I want to get your opinion. I ask everybody this is the most over asked question. Why are some people designed to. I guess the, the most overused word is hate, but why is it some people I, I like to say, why is it some people feel like they have to say something? You know, sometimes things just don't work out. That's what I say. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Like, move on, do your thing. It's no big deal. Uh But why do you think people are compelled? I always say this. I said this to a friend of mine. I said, people are just compelled to be right at all costs. More often than not, we deal with that with, and I know they're going to hate me for saying it. We deal with that with women, but, um, (laughs) but they're compelled to be right. I'm right every time. Yeah, I'm always right. <laughs> no one can ever just have a... And I said this to even a close friend of mine recently. I'm like, dude, having a conversation with you is like the roughest thing. He's like, what do you mean, bro? I'm like, it doesn't always have to end with somebody winning the conversation. Can't you just have a conversation? Like, I might look at this guy and say, Seth, I see a few clouds. You may say, I don't see any. I'd be like, all right, beautiful day. Let's go. You know, <laughs> but why is that? What's the mechanism that triggers that, in your opinion? What? Why is that? Uh, you know, I'm not completely sure because I noticed the same thing. And uh, one of the things I've done is I've eliminated people in my life that are like that. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't, I don't fuck with people like that. Like I like, um, like if you're not in it for the best of yourself, 
I don't want anything to do with you. Like everybody should have the interest of themselves to do better, but not in the sense of hurting other people. Like, um, like every, I, I, man, that's a, that's a loaded question because you can go a million different ways. I I look at it. I look at it actually really simply, Seth. I say, I say that we're around a lot of people that weren't hugged enough as children. (laughs) I'm serious. You're right. You got to be okay. You have to be okay with yourself. You got to be fine. You have to be like, you know what? I am who I am. You know, it's like, it's like somebody said to me, okay. I, you know, when I left a position at one point, you know, in the, in the, in, in, you know, I dealt with like some people and some back whatever. And my friend of mine looked at me and he goes, they know who they hired. They know who you were. It's not a secret. You don't exactly keep it a secret. You know what I mean? Like you, you can tune in. There's really 9,000 episodes that show that, you yeah. know, it's, you know, but I think what it is, is I, I think just people, you know, want to be coddled every step of the way and they want to, Oh, you're doing good, Timmy. Um, let me give you a hug and Oh, boo hoo. You know, I mean, and if you, if you don't know who you are, if you're not comfortable with who you are, like I, I say this in a lot of the motivational things that I do, like you're, you're, you're 100% right. Like I think that there are way too many fucking people that are soft, way too many people that were given too much, handed too much, or told they were good at things when they weren't. 100%. But if you don't, if you don't know who you are as a person or know exactly, or know where you're going, know what you want. Like, what do you want in life? Like, what do I want in life? Like mine, I, I have my, you know, my short-term goals, my long-term goals, my daily goals. And, and, and whenever I look at things, like if you're not comfortable with who you are, you're never going to be satisfied. Like you're not satisfied. That's a, that's a loose word. But like, whenever I wake up in the morning, I have a conversation with myself. I look at myself in the mirror and I know who the fuck I am. I know where I'm going and I know who's on my fucking team. Mm-hmm. I have to look at myself every day and say these things about myself and know that you're really good at what you do. You're really good at being you. You're really good at motivating people. You're really good at lifting weights. You're really good at running the marketing side of your company. You're really good at coming up with the ideas that built your company. Oh, great. Seth, you fucking suck at IT work. You have no clue how to work the back end of any company that you own. Okay. So if I know those things, whenever we go into meetings and we have how we're going to work these, how we're going to work all the ideas that we came up with, the whole marketing plan and how they're actually going to be executed on the back end of things, I can't step in and say anything because I don't know anything. 100%. So I know who I am. I know who I am and I know where I'm going and I know what I want. What do I want in life? My ultimate goal in life is personal financial freedom. Like that's a goal of mine so that I can say if I would like to go on a vacation of any such, I could be able to. That's a fucking crazy long, long dream of mine is to just be able to do anything that I want. Is it, is it over the top? No, I would love to own, uh, I'd love to own more property than I have right now. So I know what I want and I think that's what keeps me in line with like, uh, with pretty much everything I do. They're bumpers. Yeah, they're bumpers that keep you on the on the path. Yeah. And that's what yeah, I, and that's I think, what, yeah, those mini goals are what really save you. You know. And I and I don't think I don't think everybody has those because they're not even comfortable with who they are as people. And I think that's why there's a lot of hate spouted off uh, back and back at people because even and, and if and I'm telling people these things. So let's say all of a sudden like I may deviate from it. Like, I might wake up one day and say, fuck it. You know what I want? I want a fucking yacht. I want a yacht. All of a sudden, like, I go buy a yacht, and everybody would be like, fuck, he lost his roots completely. He's a fucking piece of shit. And it's like, no, hold on. Maybe I just had a, uh, maybe I just realized that I wanted something else in life that mm. I could afford. I, I don't, I don't like to pass judgment upon people if, uh, if they would like to do anything in life. If they work for it, they deserve anything they want. How about, the, can, how about you, this, Seth? I don't give a shit what anybody else does. Fuck no. I just want to put it this way. Plain and simple, in my life, I want people to feel alive. Mm-hmm. Bro, if your dream is to go on a crazy vacation 
to Barbados and get a fucking blowjob in a cabana sitting drinking a Mai Tai, I'm all for it, bro. Tell me that story when you get home. Yeah. But we, whatever, 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 yeah, and we talked about your thing is. Tell me about it. We talked about this offline. People care so much about what other people are doing. That's why things like reality TV. That's why sitcoms are dying. It's because people are so obsessed with what the Kardashians are doing, or this one's doing, or that one's doing. And listen, at the end of the day, I'm going to speak for Seth saying this. Everything that's put out there, we put out what we want you to see. Okay, and. Nobody's day is perfect. Everybody goes through shit, okay? But we try to put the most uplifting moment of our day out there. And that's what I explain to people about social media. We put something out there that makes us smile. And that's where things like Instagram or Twitter can be great if you use the tools properly. And you use them to, you know, dispense love and, hey, here's what I'm doing today. Here's something I think is funny. Here's what I think. If it's not your brand of humor, I've never cared whether I had three people, six people, or nine people listening. I don't care. I started this podcast back in my kitchen. Nobody was listening. And I don't blame them. But I was practicing. (laughs) I was getting better. And I was learning. And I did that, you know, with this show after I had done two shows prior. And, you know, I think I think it comes back to what I said, um, Seth, about people getting hugged. And I just live by a different philosophy. I say, I've said it on the show a hundred times. Maybe it's because I'm from New England and we just win. I say, expect nothing, blame no one and do your job. Expect nothing, blame no one and do your job. And at the end of the day, if some people want to get on the train with you, come on. If they don't want to get on the train with you, get off. There's, and there's no harm nor foul in it. No. Because, and, and, and that's what, and again, dude, that's what I believe is great about America because there is more than one way to make money. Mm-hmm. There's more than one Plenty way to go to around. On this show, I tell people all the time, start a podcast. Do this. Do that. Like right now during Cor- Cor- Corvette, I posted it the other day. I, I said I did 64 podcasts or something in 61 days because I didn't want to squander the time. But there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, I'm going to lay on the couch. They want to lay on the couch. Oh, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna watch 75 Netflix episodes. I, I don't even have a Netflix subscription. You know, I, I just, you know, the woe is me thing and everything else. But what scares me, Seth? What scares me and what I want to because you're such an uplifting dude and you've always been supportive in your darkest hour when we've had conversations and picked up the phone and called each other. You've always been a supportive dude. What scares me is when you have people out there that legitimately don't want to see people do well. They don't want to see people achieve. They don't want to see people perform, and they don't want to see people excel. And that's fucking scary for society, let alone friendships. I agree 100%. It it is one thing that I I talk, I don't don't talk too openly about it because it never becomes a huge subject in 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 a public platform, but it terrifies me for the same reason, just because, it's crazy how quickly that mentality can spread. Mm-hmm. It spreads way quicker than me hoping for you to go do something extravagant and uplifting and, and life fulfilling. The fact that people love to watch people fail or fuck up and the, and how quickly they are to jump on it is insane. If it bleeds, and that, and it leads. Is a, it, and it really is scary. And that's one of the reasons that I, I, I do my, I do everything I can to be positive, bro. Just because, like you've already noticed, <laughs> I swear, uh, I swear probably every seven words. Uh, I'm not light. I'm intense, but I'm I'm crazy positive. I want intense positivity in life. Like I don't want people to lollygag or just go to work and have a good day. I want people to wake up and have this burning desire to fuck shit up, to just have an awesome day. Come home excited about what they accomplished at work and tell their family about it, love their kids, and then go fucking go run, go lift weights, fuck your wife. I don't care anything. Be exciting. It's amazing how <laughs> many people do, don't want to see people do that. So it really is. It's troubling. Oh, it's insane. And that's why I do what I can with all of my social media outlets to do that because I know whenever – whenever there is a little bit of negativity or there is the opportunity for somebody to have a hiccup or a blip, bro, they just 
flock to it. And all those people that were so said to be on your side and they were always the flip floppers or anything, those people would be very quick to jump on the other end. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, okay, but that's the way of the world. And you can't let that hold you down or that you can't let that hold you down or put you into a negative, into a negative uh, atmosphere. Because, bro, being negativity will just ruin everything. Yeah. I, I, it's cancer. I'm, I have no place for it. I, I mean, I'm a grown fucking man. And whenever I was going through the shit in my life, I was like, man, it's fucking with me. Man, it's beating me up. It's Fuck, cancer. Dude, making me feel bad, making me fucking be a little bit of a dick every day. And then, like, I stop and I look and I'm like, I have a fucking nine-year-old daughter. And I have, a, I have an eight, she was about eight years old. And my other daughter was about three years old, four years old. And I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I'm a grown man having a hard time right now. How the fuck do these kids feel? Mm -hmm. These kids have to be so mind fucked. And I'm like, I'm fine, Seth. You need to shut the fuck up, become a better person, because there's people on, in this world that rely on you to be better. So get your fucking shit together. And those are the types of moments that I've been able to like have with myself just a reality check those bumpers like you said mm -hmm. be like wake the fuck up dude get your shit together there you have good things focus on what you can do and not what you can't and become better yeah, and, and, and you can be <laughs> soft you can be uh understanding you can be reciprocal okay people ask me all the time they say do you ever get emotional i say fuck yeah i get emotional do you, you know, do you oh, ever have any feelings? I, you, know, you know, do you have any feelings towards things? I say I cry at the end of every, every time I watch Rocky 2. I'm in tears at the end. <laughs> every time. Every single time. But the reality is, Seth, it's, it's nice to see a guy excel. And we talk, like I said, a lot about transitions. Transitions of Leo guys, mill guys to regular life and to getting a job and transitions and people that successfully make the transition to private life, people that successfully, and people don't understand that behind that transition that people see, whether it's on social media or anything else, there's hours and hours of hard work people don't see. And oh. There's a lot that goes into that, and there's a lot of emotional setbacks, personal setbacks, and, and people want total transparency, and they might say, well, why didn't you talk about that then, or let us know, or this or that, and you say, well, maybe I just wasn't ready to process it at that time, but if you find yourself in a, in a place where, like, I'm at the point now in my career and life where somebody says something negative about anybody, I'm just like at the point where I'm like, uh, you know, whatever. Like, I'll make my own. I'm a grown man. You know? Yeah. I'll make my own and, decision. And, and I still have my moments of weakness because there still are things that bother the ever-loving fuck out of me. And I'll slip up because, you know, if you talk for a living on a podcast, you're bound to say something something inappropriate or out of line or, or anything like that. If I get too fired up on my podcast, I've done it. And it's like, <clears throat> but at the same time, like, I'm not going to live in a bubble. No. I'm going to, I'm, you have to, you have to, in my opinion, you have to wear your emotions on your sleeve. Mm -hmm. You have to, at least for me, because that's the type of life I want to live. Um, and I, I'm an excitable guy and I enjoy it. And I think that, uh, people, more people need to see people living that way to be better versions of themselves. I think it comes like down to passion. I think you just got to have passion. Yeah, you, you have know? to, you're right. And, passion in life. Any in anything like if you go, <laughs> for example, I say that's the greatest thing you could have said was passion right now, because if you said, "Hey, like, do you want to go to a, a high end steakhouse?" and I'm like, "Absolutely." Why? Because that chef who's cooking back there cooks with passion. Mm -hmm. He cares so much about that steak coming out to your plate that he wants it to be fucking perfect, exactly like you want. And I'm like, "Yeah." Well, like I want to be around people that have passion for life. Well, it's 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 like this last dance thing with Jordan that's been on, right? I've been watching oh, it. Yeah. I'm sure everybody's been watching it. In the last episode, they they kind of made me sit back and pause. And I talked about this with my jujitsu coach, a couple friends. You know, it it got brought up that you know he wasn't as involved in the in in his community, right, in the black community, and in his in the movement at that time. And you know, he said I. It wasn't something I was passionate about. And some people that doesn't sit well with, right? 
They felt like he yeah. owed the community something. And he says on the show, like, I, I just, I'm not passionate about politics. And he got, you know, kind of screwed because, you know, he said Republicans buy Nikes too. And sure. he said it off the cuff and he goes, I just made a comment. And Jordan makes a great point. The greater point here is everything we do is a, under such intense scrutiny, right? Everybody's looking for an I gotcha moment. I gotcha. You know, I, yep. I told you he was like this or she was like yep. that. And I'm yep. just like, who has the fucking time to sit there and play that game? You know, literally when I get into it with people, whether it's on social media or anything else, I'm like, you win, I lose. I'm like, you're right. You're, you're just, you're fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even have the fucking time, you know, to, to get into it with people on that level because I'm like, I just get a kick out of it. Like, I just laugh. Because what people don't realize that putt from the from the the rough, right, Seth, is you, me, certain people, I've heard it all. I've heard it all at this point. At this point, friends of mine close to me, I've heard it all at this point. And I'm sure you have too about you. I've heard it all. So I'm at the point where when somebody says something, I'm like, yeah, you're right. You win. Like, who, like what the fuck? You know, well, and it's the thing. I don't. I think a lot of people that are like that, um, they don't have a lot of life themselves. No, like people that the the, the I got you people or the people that sit there the whole time doing something. They don't have a lot for themselves. They don't. They don't have the same fulfillment that I have about waking up and living my life. They're waking up and waiting to watch my life to criticize it. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean my. I mean anybody's anybody. like, you know, athletes or mm -hmm. anything. And I sit there and I think, man, like, like I just say to myself, and that's one of the reasons I let it roll down my back is I'm like, man, does your life suck so bad where all you do is criticize other people for their life rather than do something great within your life for other people? And I'm, I just sit there and I'm like, man, I wish, and sometimes people, but that is, people gravitate towards negativity. They are excited to hear something bad or terrible about somebody who's successful they're excited to hear about uh, who doesn't like looking at a train wreck. You know, it's whenever something's going on and whenever I was going through the shit in my life years ago, people love to watch it. People love to hear the gossip. And I'm like, man, like I didn't think that many people in my hometown thought I was a piece of shit. Seth, they didn't think like that whenever they needed my help. For, and I for, think, okay, we, but then, you know, time goes by and I just keep my head to keep my nose to the grindstone, do my own thing. And then people started to see that it wasn't like that. Seth, we live in a society where when Vince Vaughn went to shake the president's hand at the national championship game, it was headline news the next day, trying to run him out of Hollywood. That's how fucked up we are. Yeah, and uh, and it it goes back to uh, it goes back to something you said earlier on is is in the media media will show you only what they want you to see, mm -hmm. and that's a controlling factor. And in times like this. Uh, in times like this, especially with the coronavirus going on and, you know, so much, so much crap is being spread through mainstream media, through every different angle. You just, it is hard for anybody to grasp, grasp what is actually occurring right now. It's all fake. It's all bullshit. Because it, it, it is. Uh, I look at it, I say that what we're living through right now will go down in history as something but I'm not sure what it's going to go down in history as mm -hmm. because any point in history that we look back upon, we're like, Oh yeah. Do you remember, uh, do you remember going through, uh, fuck the Spanish flu, which was like, I can't remember the, the exact date. You know, I it's don't like know, 19, but if 13. they were like, from, yeah, it was like from 1912 to 1914, something like that. And you're like, Oh man, two years they dealt with that. And like, we look at it as like, Oh, two years. And then in 1916, this happened in 1917, 1920. We go through that, but right now, the coronavirus, say it was 2020. Like, it's not going to say what happened in 2020. It might be like 2020 to 2022 or 2020 to 2021, whenever we look back at it in history. Yeah, it might. So, like, us living through these past three or four months of this might just be the beginning.
I'm, what is that I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. I'm not as bad as Cutler is. Jay's the Jay's the king of kings, especially in fitness. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's the he believes in the aliens and the Martians are here. Um, oh man, I gotta talk to him. Jay's the best. Gonna We're to gonna get again. to that, but I think the coronavirus. See, my issue with it now is the cure is becoming worse than the disease. Yeah, you know the suicide rate issues you have out there people not being able to get back to work get back to their routines and that's something that's drastically affecting bodybuilding fitness people can't um get back into a routine and it's that routine that keeps society stable it's that routine that keeps people stable it's they need their routines and um people have a hard time finding their routines they need society to dictate their routines so guys like you and i we just find a new routine and we beat it like a drum Right. Yeah. Guys like Jay find a new routine and they beat it like a drum and we get better at times like this. Okay. We set goals. I set a goal day one when they said shut down for a month. I said, motherfucker, turn the page. We're on to Cincinnati. What's the next thing? Okay. I don't dwell. Okay. But you have. You know, situations where people now it's dragged on and now we have the conspiracy theories out there and all this hubbub about everything now i i I do think you know um spanish flu there was a lot of miscalculations you know you had a very very uh tough generation then right uh different animal i read something where babe ruth survived two pandemics you know and he he got stricken with both diseases and played through it uh we didn't miss a game of baseball we didn't miss a game of this a game of that nothing was canceled uh was that right Probably not, you know, in hindsight. Uh, But the reality is now we're in such a a, a sensitive culture and in such a sensitive uh, environment that everything's like, well, um, if you go outside, you have to wear a uh, suit and everything has to be hermetically sealed and you have to do this. I mean, motherfucker, when I was a kid, we ate dirt. You know, they said, what's for dinner? You eat fucking dirt. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I mean, our parents smoked cigarettes and blew it in our face. I'm not saying yeah. that shit was right, but, it, you know, there's got to be balance. You know, balance think, in the force. There's got to be balance here. I, and and uh, one thing that, uh, I mean, I'm, I, uh, I'm sitting here. I, have a, I tore my tricep five days ago, so I'm sitting here laid up, and I've been, you name it, I've watched it on YouTube. Wah. I've watched Oh, everything. I've seen it all. I've, I've read all everything, and it's, it's driving me insane. <laughs> but I think that anybody, anybody that believes that these people are dumb, the powers to be, so to say, anybody that thinks they're stupid, they are very wrong. These people are not stupid. This is a well-calculated, well-thought-out plan that is taking place right now. Mm-hmm. I believe that they have done all of these things in a manner to get these people to do these things voluntarily. Yeah. I mean, we are doing uh, these, everything has been, everything has been, this was all a very well thought out plan. Um, the powers to be have every person, they pull the strings and the strings say what they need to say. Um, it's, it's very ugly. I think that, I think that Trump and the administration is up against something that is not pretty, uh, just because you see the divide in the country again. Whenever, an occur- whenever there is usually something bad that happens in the country, you- unity is the most important thing. And, uh, and you can see that right He's now. He's never going to get that. Th- and that's what I was just going to say. Unity is as far from fucking re- reality as possible. We are not unified as a country. You see, these, you see far right. You see far left. You see, uh, you see mayhem occurring right now. You see people being arrested for opening up their businesses. You see people that are fucking 10 times sex offenders being released from, from fucking prison. And within 24 hours later, they're already, they're already, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing the same shit they went to prison for. So it's like, I'm like, I sit here and I think to myself, this is fucking insane. Mm-hmm. This is being done. These people are doing these things on purpose. These are not accidental things. These are all things that are well thought out, well calculated actions. And it's tough to, it's tough to sit here and say, because what in the fuck are we supposed to do? 
you know, and I look at my own hometown here, my small town, I see restaurants going out of business. I see people not getting their PPP. Uh, the small businesses aren't getting their loans that they needed. They're, they're having a shutdown. And my thing is, is in my community, my most important thing is, is that my people stay employed. I've been fortunate enough that our companies have, have thrived right now. We are still doing very good business. We're making sure that we are stimulating our economy. We are buying as much as we can from our local grocery stores, from our local uh, mom and pop food joints. You name it, we are doing it to make sure that they know that we're with them. Well, uh, I mean, and, yeah, and that's, so the people and, don't think things are manipulated in society. I posted the other day, I'm a big fan of Ed's manifesto, a, a hit that was in the Bronx and two guys hop out of a car, suppressors assassinated someone and people don't realize people, things get manipulated, you know, and that's why, you know, the world we, we all live in today. Okay. The news, the media, Everything gets manipulated to create a narrative. And it's a shame because you're not allowed really truly to interpret it how you want because you're bombarded. And it takes an insane amount of resolve, intelligence, a willingness to have dialogue, a willingness to have a conversation, to see through it and sift through it a little bit, so to speak. It's very hard to do. It's very hard to do. I mean, you're a smart guy, so you're able to figure it out, right? But there's people out there that are like, bah, oh, stay home, collect check, sit in house, live in fear. <laughs> it's, it's true. Crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. It really is. Now, it, 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 where it goes from here, what's your prediction? How does this play out? I, I have... I have no idea. I'm hoping that, I mean, there's, I obviously sit here and think about it. I'm like, man, maybe what will occur is I, I do believe this. I do believe that this is, uh, this is world changing similar to how nine 11 changed how we fly, how TSA, everything. Uh, I believe that this is one of those occurrences where we will never be the same again, uh, as a world. I think that we will travel differently. I think we'll have different public venues differently. I don't think that anything will go back to the same until there is, until something comes out about what the coronavirus is. And that might be, that might be uh, something that I really don't want to say right now. That might not be unless there is some type of vaccination for the coronavirus. Like that might, we might not ever go back to some type of reality where we're not wearing a mask standing next to somebody. What do you think it's from? You think it's from like people fucking goats? What do you think it's from? What, the coronavirus? Yeah. Uh, I believe that it is a man-made virus. I believe that it is. I don't think that it came from, I don't think that it came from cross-contamination or crossover from animal to human. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, with everything that I've read, with everything that I've heard uh, other doctors say, uh, I've heard a couple people that uh, worked in the hospitals in, in the, on the West Coast. They said that there's no way these, this is something that was just poop came from, came from nature, so to say. They believe that if this was a, uh, that this virus was created to do what it's doing. You heard so, it I mean, here I, first, I, people. I, you heard it here I, on this I, show. I don't know if I can. I, I, Seth I can't, has sources. I mean, all I do is I'm just, I just, bro, I've been sitting here for five days listening to as much shit as possible. I, I listen to things that I absolutely despise. I watch mainstream media for 36 minutes. I, uh, I sat there and I'm like, I can't believe that people actually absorb this information and believe that they all have their best, your best interest. If there's one thing that you gather, you watch mainstream media and you're like, these people are not telling me this for my looking out for me. Jay, Jay told me he had you. sources on the aliens, so I believe you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh man, I can't wait to I can't wait to hit him up and be like, "Jay, I heard you're into aliens." Yeah, let's hear it. Where do you stand on the because, alien thing? Uh, I, I mean, where do I stand on the aliens? I believe that. Uh, I mean, bro, I I have my vast knowledge and what I know, and that's uh, that's yard work. That's the supplement industry. That's lifting weights. Oh, come on. That's a cop. But when it comes to, but, no, no, no. When it comes to this, 
you'd have to be crazy. Like I live out in the country, bro. I have no light pollution whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Whenever you look up at the sky at nighttime and you see the fucking millions of stars <laughs> and you're looking up there and you think, you know, I am definitely the only human type of species in the entire galaxy. I'm the only kind. You'd have to be a fool to think like that. It's true. You'd have to be a fool because when I look up at the stars, I'm like, it is so vast. It is unbelievable. And there is no way that we, as a species, as a human species, in the time that we have been able to figure XYZ out, that we don't think there's anybody out there smarter than us. We don't think there's anything that is uh, uh, humanoid, so to say. But you'd be crazy because all you got to do is just look up and be like, man, look at all these things. But are they green? Are they green? Oh, man. <laughs> I have no clue. I got no idea. Listen. No idea. I don't judge. I I don't think I, I don't think Oswald acted alone. Not for one second. So no. I don't judge you. I don't think. No. Uh-uh. I don't think for do you, one do you second. Think, do, you think, do you think aliens are real? So here's here's my explanation because we all <laughs> like to talk away the crazy we don't want to sound like lunatics uh-huh. we're like we don't want to say like yeah there's spaceships you know because then we yeah. but i i uh-huh. i believe here's what i think i look at technological advances and yeah. what i believe is in the last 15 years alone the amount of technological advances are so insane that it's not even funny you know yeah. we're we're We've in the last hundred years, we've grown such leaps and bounds. So you can't tell me for thousands of years we were running around in loincloths with spears, and then all of a sudden, boom, we got cell phones and we have fucking cars that run on 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 electricity and you know, we can land on the moon and we, you know, I absolutely one hundred percent believe this that there is some level of alien technology on this planet people have access to it and they're able to reverse engineer from it now here's here's my thing here's where i kind of part ways do i think like there's underground lizard people or stuff like that no not necessarily but there's too much too fast that has advanced and if people think for one second that there isn't some level of alien technology out there or some uh, level of scripting that they're able to get access to, uh, I think they're crazy. They're absolutely yeah. crazy because cover-ups are real. They do exist. There are classified documents that we'll never see. There are yep. things that we'll never know. And part of that is to protect certain things. But the reality is... I mean, you can't tell me for thousands. Oh, and then there was fire, Seth, and we had fire, and then we had the wheel, and then from the wheel, we were able to do this, and then we built car engines and nuclear bombs and everything else. I mean, I, I mean, come on. I mean, it's just yeah. crazy. And yeah, it's, you know, so for me, it's more looking at the technology, you know, the how quickly we went from a fax machine to email to scanning to this to that to the next it's just it's it, it's unreal and within 20 years we went from uh throwing rocks people. at each other to being able yeah, to we went yeah. from we went from faxing and calling people on a landline with a cord to facetiming people yeah just what i've seen in the defense industry like i know the amount of stuff that never sees the light of day in terms of technology and what's out there and you know uh, uh let's just say i've seen a lot of things that don't exist if that makes yeah. sense yep makes so sense. that's my opinion um now whether or not we want to get into area 51 and spacecraft and all that other jazz no but i'm with you you know i think that there's definitely alien technology that exists uh whether or not you think the moon landing's real or other things i think we went to the moon i believe that I, I, I do. Yeah. I believe that. I, I, you know, I believe we might have already even gone to Mars. You just don't know it. Just don't know yeah. it. So there are things you definitely don't know um, that are out there. So it's a fun conversation. I mean, it's something Jay and I have talked about doing like a four-hour episode on, you know? 
<laughs> I mean, really buckling up and bringing lunch. So, you know, it's it's definitely it's it's definitely something to talk about. But the amount of technological advances is too hard not to take a deep dive into and look at because you can't tell me Steve Jobs was just that smart. Yeah, and and it goes and it's crazy because it's uh, you look at how how you whenever we go and say this, how far technology has advanced, but then look how also how simple we as a society or as a people still are. We still are just doing simple farming tasks. Like here in, here in my area in Western PA, like, you know, I look up at the sky, I'm like, man, there's definitely these motherfuckers out here. Half a mile down the road, there's a, there's a 400 acre farm where they're still farming with just running a tractor through the field. Plant, mm. seed by seed. And I'm like, man, it's crazy how far we are thinking that things are and then how simple we still are as a people. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy that, they're, that we still go full circle through it all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely insane. You know, where it goes from here, who knows. But, I, you know, the coronavirus and how this plays out and how it plays out for bodybuilding, because Jay and I were talking about that and for the fitness industry, um, it's going to be interesting. They're going to have to get into streaming real quick. I mean, how do you see that playing out between now and the end of the year? Are we going to get Olympia? I mean, it's toast, right? What's the deal? Uh, I am terrified of what it's going to do to the industry. I do not know how the ISBB or any other any other uh, corporations that are associated with it, how they run their businesses and their numbers and how they've prepared for an event or have their have a backlog of money or the type of help they're getting from the from the government assistance or anything like that i would hope that uh that the industry doesn't die i don't think it will i don't think ifbb will disappear i know they are taking a massive hit because everyone's taking a hit at this point Mm. it's just depending on how bad um i think that you are right if they do not do something to innovate I know the Olympia won't occur in September. It's going to be way longer than that. I think that we might not even have, we might not have an Olympia this year. We might not have another bodybuilding show this year. I think that the streaming, I don't know how you judge a bodybuilding show from a streaming per picture mm-hmm. video standpoint, because everybody knows real life is way different than a video, way different than a picture. And I also know that if you don't put asses in the seat, if you don't have an expo, the same amount of money is not made. And if the same amount of money is not made, we don't know if the business will run. Mm. Um, I think that they have to innovate. They have to start thinking of something soon. Even if that means that uh, whenever we are allowed to have some type of sporting event, we get the athletes and they are put on stage and there is no venue, but people have to purchase tickets online like for a streaming type of situation it's gotta be streaming like five, it's gotta be set. five dollars go for this or they, they have to um but i think that once you are allowed to have sporting events i think that the ifbb needs to get on their shit and put something on and put it out there for people to watch because people will the, the i pro- will spend money i will spend money to support it i will make sure that my businesses support if they need a sponsor for it, fuck yeah, here's a sponsor. Put my label. Here's a commercial. We have a commercial film. You can put it on during the, during the streaming. Uh, you can do this. Anything to help support it. Because if this industry dies, if that dies, it's, it's not doing anything good for anyone that loves fitness. Well, the, the, there's a couple things there, Seth, to unpack. You know, um, for starters, right, we all... Um, we all want to see the industry prevail and endure. Now, I think, and I said this to Jay the other day, I'll be very upfront about it on this show. I said, the critical error, and you saw something similar in the defense industry. We just, when we have bumps, we have big bumps uh, because of panic, and ammo is the best tradable commodity on the planet. Now, with that being said, there was too much emphasis on saving a magazine in the fitness industry. And what they should have been doing is focusing on getting into new spaces. And I've said this a hundred times, Seth, and I'll be insanely critical because I've had this argument with companies. You have a lot of old guys that don't understand new platforms and they have a failure to adapt to those new platforms. And they don't understand 
when you look at like WWE, when, when, when um, Vince McMahon said, hey, Triple H, run with it. What's the first thing he did? He came up with the app, $9.99 a month, put all the content on there and started a subscription service. It's fucking genius, right? Yep. And if you literally took a camera guy, and this is what I don't understand about some of these industries, like the fitness industry, if you literally took a camera, a cell phone camera, and set it up and streamed the show and charged $9.99 for it, and you offer you know, all these incentives, whatever else, a free magazine subscription, and even the camera showed behind-the-scenes stuff, and you had commentators, maybe like you, maybe like Guy, maybe like certain people commentating on the shows, you'd be able to print the money out the back door. Yeah. But what I don't understand is what's the problem? Why is that so hard? You know The Rock's going to come in and do something like that, and he's going to spin the whole world on its head. But the problem is you have, you know, a lot of fat cat old guys that are like, uh, 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 they don't understand it, so they don't want to do it. And they sit back and they want to make decisions, and it just won't won't happen. And that's a huge failure. Absolutely, because if it changes now, that means it's going to change in the future for quite some time. Mm-hmm. might change how business is done. And I believe that that's the direction that this country's heading in is that business is going to be done much differently, at least for the time being, or until, like I said, something occurs, something drastic is going to occur, whether I like it or you like it or anyone likes it. Um, and, and, uh, we only have to play out and see, but I know that if we don't do, if businesses do not innovate and change right now, mm-hmm. they may die. They may die. Hundred percent. And I, I think that um, I think bodybuilding is one of those things that if they, right, you, it's crazy because you we've been watching it transition for quite some time. You know the the expos are bigger than the bodybuilding shows. The men's physique and classic physique have more competitors than bodybuilding ever has. Bodybuilding still puts asses in the seats, but at the end of the day. From a monetary standpoint, classic physique still still drags in more money. Um, so it's one of those things that we just we just wait and see. And I just hope that the people at the top and the people that run the business have their shit together and do have plans to execute when things happen. Because I, that's what I do with my businesses every day. I have to have a plan of attack. I have to have short term, long term, uh, uh, <laughs> innovative, different ways of thinking to make sure that I continue to employ people, please my customers, and make sure that we have a sustainable business. And that's so why I, you'll be I'm ahead. Hoping, I'm hoping that they are doing the same. I mean, look at Half Thor and, and Eddie Hall. Half Thor and Eddie Hall. Half Thor just broke the, the deadlift record, um, that 501 kilogram, and, uh, and all he did was piss Eddie Hall off, and they went back and forth about it arguing, and now they're going to do a boxing match against each other. Genius. And stream it. Bro. Every you're gonna watch two four hundred pound juiced up monsters punch each other in the face. I think they're gonna get Sign exhausted. Me. I think what you gotta do is they should have done it MMA style in a cage with spikes and, and electrified fences. Sign me the fuck up. Yeah. I'm all for it, dude. I want to see it. I'll pay fifty bucks to watch those two beat each other up. A hundred percent. And and I and think it, they're it, genius. It, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's that Seth. It's that out of the box thinking that I've been trying to push on the gun industry for the longest time. I mean, you remember when I was bringing bodybuilding and fitness into shooting, I ate shit in my industry a ton, but the reality is all these industries cross over and Eddie Hall and, and, and Thor, you know, half Thor doing this is genius. Now, what I don't understand is why the IFBB or MPC in their infinite wisdom, and it's kind of like what I deal with a little bit with the NRA, can't take a step back and say, we need to capitalize on this shit. We should be behind this. We should be the ones proliferating this. But I'm telling you, Seth, because I've been in the rooms, and I said it to Jay the other day, I've been in the rooms. You go in the rooms, and the people are 50, 60 years old paying themselves a salary, and they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear change or they don't want to hear we got to put a half a million in, into this. I've literally had an executive say this to me, bro, I just want to get my daughter through college and I'm done with this shit. Yeah. And that's part of the problem. And I think that is, I think that is in every single industry. And I think that, um, I think that happens whenever you're, I mean, bro, right now it's a turning point. Mm-hmm. Like you said that I do believe that those conversations do happen. Um, 
And if you're not, if you're, if, bro, if you're not young, hungry, and ready to fucking get your dick beat in a little bit, like if you, like you said, I just want to get through college a little bit. Meanwhile, if that guy is sitting there and he's 55, 60 years old, just saying, I just want to get my kid through college and I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Meanwhile, in another industry or in, or in the neighboring company, that guy might be 35 years old saying, you know what? I'm willing to take the chance to get kicked right in the fucking ball. Or even, take this or even the better, there, there's it. a Seth Ferrosi or a Jay Culler or somebody out there that says, you know what? I'm going to start SF Productions and I'm going to do it. Yep. And yep. you know what? There's- because I've said it about shooting, right? You have Ipsic, you have IDPA, you have all these different things. I said, I'm tempted. If I had the money to throw at it, I'm tempted to be like, you know what? I'm going to start a uh, major league shooting league. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to launch a website and I'm going to go ahead and give a piece of all the, the, the revenue to the top five shooters. And you tell me that they can't get behind that. And I'm going to put the score on the screen and you can see the score published and I'm going to put everything up there and I'll just do a revenue share. It's real simple, yep. but yep. it's, it's a failure. That's, that's why the, the you know, that's why I said the rock's going to come in and he's going to crush it. He's gonna. He, he knows what he's doing. He's not stupid. You know. Yeah, he's not dumb. He's, he's not uh, dumb. He's, no, no, he, nothing he does is dumb, and he doesn't do anything alone. No, he's gonna come he in. He's to. gonna stream it. He's gonna do all this stuff, and the IFBB and the MPC are gonna be like, "Oh, which which way did he go? What happened? They they occur. tricked us. That could occur. Yep, hundred percent." Because you can literally do everything I'm talking about with a cell phone and a tripod. And tell me I'm lying, Seth. That's the scary <laughs> part. You that's just have to have part. the money in the you just have to have the money in the back and, and, and that's really it. It's not it's yep. not rocket science. Mm-hmm. No. You need a pay portal, because- you you need all those things, and I'm telling you, the first guy that does it that's smart, because the template here's the thing, I'm not that smart. The template already exists. Look at what the WWE's done. Look at what the UFC's done with ESPN Plus and the UFC package and all that stuff. What is Dana White doing by doing all these grappling matches, jujitsu matches? I've been to them. He's just creating content, Seth. It's just content. So, in my opinion, all the NPC or IFBB has to do is spend a little less money on, like, the boat or the yacht or whatever the fuck, you know, Right now, they should be recapturing money because they're not. There shouldn't be much money outgoing because the shows, but not much is coming in. But they should invest in a pay portal, take all that old flex content, everything, make it all free, put it all in there, whatever content they can gobble up. Because it, I'm sure they could buy a lot of the old digital flex stuff or anything and and put it all there because it's pennies. Nobody's buying it. And take everything that they can muster, put it in there, and then start to build streaming content. And that's the tough thing, like I said earlier, like about, I don't know exactly how their business is run. Like the IFBB doesn't own the Mr. Olympia competition. No. AMI does. AMI and I'm like, does. AMI with Flex Magazine, and, uh, and it changes hands and ownership and, and presidency or CEO and who's in charge. And I look and I'm like, man, like, I don't understand the actual inner workings of it all, but obviously they work together, but they're all not under the same company. And I'm like, I would, I don't know that end of the business. And I'm like, I just hope because I'm, bro, I'm a huge fan of bodybuilding. I will always be, I just, I have an affinity for, for people's bodies and uh, just how incredible the human body actually is from every standpoint, physical and physical uh, intensity and how they look. So, I, uh, and I'm like, I just, bro, don't, all I'm hoping is for is guys don't fuck this up. Mm-hmm. Let's not fuck this up. Yeah. Like, it, don't, don't die because there's a lot, there is a ton of people who, who do love it. And I mean, for, like I said, the, is the put, what puts ass is in the seats is, is bodybuilding. Like, Mr. Olympia, people go to see the freak. People go to see this extravagant thing, even though from a dollar standpoint, men's physique and classic physique they do get more money from a social media standpoint but like bro, if you go to a bodybuilding show you want to see the fucking freak so i just hope that uh i hope they do right right i don't know i don't know no i mean you <laughs> like there's I, things i could say you can't so i just say them and you just kind of nod and you know it, 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 
throughout my thing is, is it goes back to, to just business, do sound business. And whenever I look at it, like I have 22 employees from all the different businesses I own. I have 22 different employees. I look at it as every day, don't fuck this up, Seth. Mm -hmm. Pay your fucking employees. Make sure they have a job. Make sure they have stability in their life. Don't fuck this up. Same thing with my customers. The tens of thousands of people that buy my supplements and T-shirts and everything that we stand for, don't fuck this up, Seth. Do a good job. Produce a good product, do a good job, and make people feel you. Mm. And whenever I look at other businesses, I look at them and I say, don't fuck this up. And I look at this and what they stand for and everything that they're doing and, and the longevity of their business and what they're capable of and how much more money they could make if they do innovate. I look and I say, don't fuck this up. You know, and, and that's where it's like, I, 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 I don't want to, I can't overstep. And all I can say is, is like, that's your business. And if I was running it, bro, it might be different. If you were running my business it might be different, but don't fuck this up. Yeah. I mean, I say everything because I'm all out of fucks. So, the qu yeah, I'm all out. But, and I, you know, I, that that's it. But I want people to know what they're getting into with me. But the the big thing I, I want to ask you, you know, as we get you know close to wrapping because we're we're at hour and twenty minutes. But um, what advice do you give? Because you do a tremendous job at the shows, glad handing and meeting the folks. What advice do you give now today in this era? to guys getting started and saying, Seth, I really want to um, make it, you know? What advice do you give? And don't, you know, give me the hard work speech. Give me the honest advice that you give the youngsters out there, whether they want to make it in media, whether they, I was going to say publication, right? But that's dead. Yeah. Whether they want to make it in media, they want to make it in, in, in bodybuilding or fitness. Like wh where did you even begin to start? What's so, advi the uh, advice you give? The hard work speech is, is a very true speech, but everybody gives it. You know what I mean? Oh, you got to work hard. You got to do this. I'll say this. Like, my dad told me whenever I wanted to start my own business, Seth, it's really easy to own your own business. And I'm like, oh, man, that's great. You know, in my head, I'm thinking that. And he's like, you just have to pick what 16 hours a day you want to work and work the ever loving fuck out of them. You got to pick your 16, dickhead, and work. Like you, you, at that point I was like, okay, so I'm just going to work a whole lot. Yeah. But I will say that anything that you want to do good in life, if you're not truly passionate about it and you don't feel it in your heart, you're never going to beat a motherfucker that does feel it. You'll never beat them. Never, ever. So you have to have passion. And then number two, you're going to have to do some fucked up shit. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be an easy road. Or it's not going to be like, hey, you know, I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to kick the day right in the dick and I'm going to drink my coffee and feel great and love my wife and I'm never going to do anything and nothing bad's going to happen. I'm just going to work super hard. No, dude, there's going to be times whenever you're placed in a position that you could not dream of ever being put in. You might have to fucking let go. You might have to, you might have to let go some of your employees. You might have to get, not get paid for fucking two months. You might have to go upside down on your mortgage. You might actually have to go fucking broke and file for bankruptcy in order to save what you wanted to do. You might have to do things that you never wanted to do. You might actually realize that the people that are in your life, your support system, actually isn't your support system. That's the toughest your one. Significant, your significant other actually might be the person that's causing the problem and holding you back from success in life. You might actually have to say, you know, I, I don't ever, you know, my kids, like I'm always home every day at three o'clock so I can be the best dad I can be. Hey, dickhead, just because you don't pick your kids up every day at three doesn't mean you're a bad dad. Mm -mm. That might be someone's else definition. Me, whenever I was working for all this, I, wor I woke up every single morning at 4.30 a.m. I did my cardio. I got ready. I woke my kids up, got them, got them ready for, for school, put them on the bus, went to work, picked them up at four o'clock in the afternoon, we took them back down to my warehouse. And we stayed at the warehouse until fucking midnight, three days a week. So my young three-year-old and my eight-year-old stayed with me at work until midnight at a shitty, dirty warehouse three nights a week. That's what my life was. You're going to have to do things that are gut wrenching mm -hmm. that aren't horrible, but they are things that will occur. You're not going to have this easy road to success. You're not going to get to eat a filet mignon every Friday night. 
some nights you're going to have to fucking mix tuna fish and macaroni and cheese, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to eat peanut butter and jelly every day. And, and those are things that people, you have to be prepared to do if you want success in life. You have to be willing to do these things that many people don't like to do. And me, whenever I was making very good money as a safety consultant, I, I had a great job. I, I didn't, nothing was really bad in my life uh, from a financial standpoint, but I would never, I would never be able to attain this the the level of financial freedom that I dreamt of in life. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I wanted that financial freedom, I had to go so that no matter how, no matter what I was doing, I was always making money. I was building businesses and doing things that was going to make money all day, every day, forever. For as long as I would, as long as I would deem it necessary, because I was running the show. I was in charge. And then I gave up a huge, a huge uh, salary, a great deal, and I made a quarter of the money for about two and a half years. And I, I got by, and everything was fine. I went broke, spending money on inventory. I, uh, I, I spent all my money uh, in a divorce. But those are the things I went through, and uh, in order to be in the position I am. So everything that people want like you have to work hard that's that's inevitable but you have to legitimately be willing to live through things that most people be like you know what i'm good being comfortable in this position like i don't want to go into that jungle i don't want to be hunted by a tiger i don't feel like getting bit by a snake like keep me out of that jungle i'm just going to hang out here in in my area and me and other people that want something extravagant well, you got to be willing to go into that jungle. You got to be willing to. You know, that's perfect. I always simplify it like this. When someone says, you know, oh, this or that, I say, you want to get ahead? You got to be ready to leave people behind. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to get ahead? You're going to have to leave people behind. That's the reality. And ambition's a motherfucker. And it's a hard flame to put out. Yes, it is. But it's what keeps you alive. It's what keeps the blood pumping. You know? For sure. And you you need the right support system, and you're going to leave people behind. And whether it's, you know, seasons of life, and this is probably, um, like I said, one of the religious holdovers left in my life is I talk a lot about seasons. And sometimes there's a season, Seth. And I say this to people all the time. My friends have heard me say this. You're going to be rocky in the barn. You got to go back in the barn. You know, there's going to come a time even in your business. Maybe not today, maybe six months from now, maybe a year from now, you're going to have to say, you know what, guys in the boardroom? I'm taking a few weeks. I got to go in the barn. When I come out of the barn, I'll have some ideas. Yep. But you got to go in the barn. You got to light the fire and brimstone. You got to kick the tires, light the fires, get the flame going. And there's a time for that. And I always say this, you know, I've been asked this in, uh, I've been asked this in interviews, right? So people talk a lot about letting the job go, the steady paycheck. They say, geez, you know, you have some gaps in your work history. I said, yeah. And they say, well, what did you do? I say, well, you know, if I didn't have those gaps, I wouldn't be the brand I am today. And if you don't understand what I mean, then this probably isn't going to (laughs) work. Yeah. Because you have to have that time. And and, and that that script has flipped. I don't want to go from one job to the next job to the next job. I want to build something. Why is it when Jack Welch would take time off from GE or do and write a book and do this and do that? That's all part of growth. You got to grow. Yep. So my advice always to the young folks out there is what are you doing on your downtime? You know, okay, you get an Instagram following. That's always the first one, the obvious one everyone throws out there. Great. You got a podcast. You got TikTok. You got YouTube. What do you got firing? Where are you? Be in a place I'm not. And I've run sponsorship programs for years, as you know. I always say, tell me about where you are that I'm not. Well, what do you mean? 
I had a really big uh, person in the fitness industry call me, owns a, um, a meal company. And he said to me, he said, John, I want to hire a marketing director. I said, okay. There was a lot of other stuff discussed in terms of, uh, he goes, what's the number one interview question you could ask, you think? I said, it's a good question. I said, but it's a simple answer. I said, take your phone, throw it across the table at him. I said, ask him to call the number one person that can affect his brand successfully in his phone. And if he can't pick up the phone and call anyone that can help move the needle for, the, for your brand, get rid of him, get the next guy. <laughs> Pretty good point. I said, and it can be something as simple as a guy who drives SEO, Seth, and I know you know that's important. It can be as simple as uh, picking up the phone because a director should be able to move the needle in a certain space, right? Absolutely. Should be able to sit across from you and say, Seth, you know what I can do for X Sledge? I'm going to make a phone call right now. I got a team that's incredible at SEO, and they're a steal. Yep. Or I got a content team that's really good. And then he said, well, well, give me another question. I said, simple. Ask him what a content cre- creation strategy that he's implemented that's worked. And he's going to say, what do you mean? You know, tell me a strategy you know, that you've used, that's wor- that works, that creates a really good arbitrage. We're not a wealthy company. Tell me a strategy, Yeah, you know, that you've implemented. Because like I always say in the gun industry, terrible c- companies always deteriorate back to mag dumps in a desert. Because <laughs> they have no plan. They're putting <laughs> urinal cakes in toilets. They have oh, no plan. Man. And terrible supplement companies, as you know, deteriorate down to someone saying uh the formulation on this pre-workout will change your life or you know we used uh reverse osmosis to combine you know it just turns into like give me a fucking break yep they're not buying your protein powder set they're buying you they're buying you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly Listen. right and if and then if and then once they buy it if they actually like it then they're gonna buy it again yeah and I, I spend most, yeah, I spend most of my time talking, talking with brands now that are more, it's more about how do we get this person to go from a customer to a client? Yeah. How do we make return them sticky? Customers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sticky products. Returning, the return value is the most important thing in building a solid brand for long mm-hmm. Absolutely. So to all Absolutely. the young bucks out there trying to make it, come in with a strategy, come up with a deck. You have to be a hustling motherfucker. You just have to be somebody that's relentless. You have to have passion, and you be, or you got to be willing to eat shit sandwiches. Mm-hmm. You have to. And that's, I know that's the long and short of it. And I know the type of guy you are. It's like I've had Bruce on this show. I've had other people. They've all said the same thing. I'll take anybody that comes to me with a plan. What's your plan? Oh, oh yeah. You know, I just want to put your T-shirt on and post it. I got a hundred guys that want to do that. What's your plan? Yeah. Where are you yeah. going to be five years from now that's going to help me? And I'll help you. Because yep. I know yep. you, Seth. I know the type of person you are. You'll make somebody off the street your CEO. Oh, yeah. you bro, Like you said, you got to have a plan. Just If, you, if you're one-dimensional in life, you're fucked. Yeah. You're fucked. It's your plan. Are you willing to do this? How far? You know, I love the speech in Untouchables when um, Sean Connery you know, and they're trying to, you know, bust Al Capone. He goes, what are you prepared to do? How far are you prepared to go? Yep. You know? Ah, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm just, it's just a hobby and I have a boot camp. It's not going to work. No. Goodbye. Not to say you don't support that. It's just that's not the guy you're going to really wrap your arms around and say, let's go. Let's go get this. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Listen, I love this. We've gone for an hour and a half. It's amazing. Crushed it. Awesome. I could go for Talk two days with you. So, <laughs> listen, I love the energy. I love the brand. Let everybody know where they can find you and how they can get in touch with you and the brand and where everybody can see you. All right. So, we've all, we, you guys heard me talk about a number of different brands. All American Roughneck is my, uh, is my apparel brand, the brand for the hardworking motherfuckers of the world. Love it. Uh, uh, Axe and Fledge Supplements is the supplement company that I own. We also have uh, the HWMF podcast which we film and uh, we Love film it. and record every two, every Monday morning and Thursday morning. You can check out all those, all those uh, companies on Instagram, all American roughneck, Axe and sledge. 
HWMF podcast. And then for the most, uh, the most up to date things is for, through my Instagram, which is Seth Barossi, my name. We also have the YouTube channel, Seth Barossi, which you name it, we put it on YouTube as well. So all those different social media outlets, uh, you can check out and they will lead you to all the different websites that we have as well. Support everything, listen, tell your friends, enjoy it, purchase something, let us know what you think, write us a review, send me a comment, send me a DM. I'm getting a ton of them right now as I'm laid up with this injury, <laughs> so I'm answering anything. We, My whole goal in life is for you to be a better person and for you to feel empowered about the shit you love in life. And, uh, John, I can't thank you enough for having me on and giving me this opportunity to talk to your audience. Um, it's awesome. I always love shooting the shit with you. So can't thank you enough for it. Dude. And I appreciate it. And just so everybody knows, the reason I'm insensitive towards Seth's situation with the, the injuries banged up right now is because he's <laughs> one of the toughest motherfuckers I know. And, and these, these sick, twisted individuals like Seth, they use this as fuel. So I'm not going to give yeah. him any more fuel. That's why yeah, I say, is- wah. <laughs> it's just a chance for me to catch up. Like, you know, like, hey, I could now, <laughs> I got a chance. I can oh, get, yeah. You know, well, that's, he, you're, that's you're, been, yeah, you're a twisted soul. Yeah, that my, I'm looking at it as like, this is the only, my, my fiance left. She's like, this is the only fucking thing I've ever seen slow you down. And it's the only thing that I've seen you slow down yet. And I'm like, well, it's just pissing me off right now. I'm going to say like once, once I get the, once I get like the okay from the doctor to do a little bit faster, you'll see me run. Yeah. And I don't, I don't cry for, for Seth because I know he's in the boardroom every day making money now. So fuck him. Oh yeah. No, no, <laughs> so, I don't, don't, don't feel bad for me at all. No, this is, yeah. I, I view everything as an experience. An opportunity. Of life. Oh yeah, dude. This is just another way, another thing for me to, for, for me to use as a life experience. Yeah, and, Seth doesn't need the no, speech I'm, from me or anybody. He's already got a dial. I'm having in. a good I'm, I'm very fortunate. I got good people. Uh, my, my fiance is taking care of me. She's, she's making me a ton of food and waiting on me. And I'm like, I'm ready to get the fuck out of the house. I know that. Yeah. Well, you'll do, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll do your little, long. you'll do your walks and you know, Oh yeah. you'll get moving. But oh, yeah. listen, I love you yeah. and I appreciate you doing the show and I appreciate you taking the time because it's great to wrap with you. And, uh, when this all breaks, got to get down to Vegas and uh, have some fun. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Got to get you, you know. You can use that offhand, and you can do some, some trips to the range. You can get a little shooting into while you're at uh, it. Oh yeah, a little offhand yep. work. But um, yep. you know, listen, hey, we're all in this together. I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming up. I'm going to put the links down for uh, Axe and Sledge and for Seth's podcast down below. Make sure you go check it out. I'm terrible at these calls to action, but leave some reviews. Let us know what you think, and uh, I look forward to everything uh, that you're pumping out in the year to come. I appreciate it, Joe, brother. Thank you. We're out.